Yes, I'm very happy to kick off this excellent uh, third Mind Water Energy Symposium. Um, great honor to be the first speaker. And I would like to present briefly our heat store project that we conducted in Bochum. So you, here you see it's a picture of uh, the visitation mine, um, Nightingale in Witten, which uh, depicts um, underground drift, um, which is similar to the situation at our site in Bochum. So yeah, we see light at the end of the tunnel. And um, yeah, I would like to start my presentation just with a, a small um, recap slide about the bathtub challenge. We all know that um, over 50% of our energy demand is utilized for heating and cooling purposes. And in order to increase the renewable portion, we need some sort of storage devices. And for this, I think we all know that um, underground um, storage um, installations are very handy. And uh, for this, we know that we can use, for example, aquifer thermal energy storage systems. We can look at pit thermal energy storage systems, also at borehole thermal energy storage systems. But what we haven't really looked into it yet is uh, the ability to use abandoned mining infrastructure as a mine thermal energy storage. And that is something that we did in Bochum, where we drilled into a former um, colliery and tested this colliery as a mine thermal energy storage within the heat store project. So within the heat store project um, that was running from 2018 to 2021, we successfully um, drilled three times into our colliery that was or that is situated below our IEG premises in Bochum. We also were able to do a first uh, test operation and to obtain um, data that was used to calibrate our numerical model. We also installed um, a small district heating grid to connect the, our uh, wells with our um, solar power plant. And yeah, also in the last part, we installed a concentrated solar power plant as our re renewable heat source. Um, this slide gives you a good overview of the work that we did within the project. Here on the left-hand side, you see the drilling of the first well with our own drilling rig in the summer of 2020. Um, then in the winter of 2020, we did our first heat injection test uh, where we produced mine water with um, 11 degrees from the first well from depth of 64 meters, heated it up to 60 degrees and injected that heat into the second well, also at a depth of 64 meters. And then we circulated the heat between this area of the mine. We also have a third well, which is uh, which was drilled in the upper uh, drift of the mine at around 25 meters. But the thermal or the hydraulic conductivities are not so good that so far it's not really used in the first scheme of the heat injection test. Then in spring 2021, we installed our local district heating grid, and then we completed the overall project with the installation of our concentrated solar power plant in the summer 2021. Here you can see our heat exchanger. We also took a nice uh, picture. We can see the distributed heat that we can produce temperatures up to 60 degrees with the concentrated solar power plant heat up the mine water. So here on the left hand side, you see the feeding lines from the mine water. And then on the right hand side, you can see the connection towards our um, concentrated solar power plant so that the mine water is heated up with the um, energy from the CSP plant and then reinjected into the mine. Um, on the left hand side, just a picture of the um, former shaft of the mine. So the, the mine was operated in the 50s for around four years. And on the right hand side, you also see a nice picture of the visitation mine in Witten, which I started uh, this presentation with. And it's just to give you an idea about the situation that was used for such a small colliery on the near surface um, that you have those wooden beam constructions. You have an open connection also to the surrounding rock mass. And this area, what we are utilizing in Bochum is filled with water. And that is what we're using as a thermal energy storage. Um, our situation in Bochum, here is the Fraunhofer IEG. Below we have our small colliery. We're also located close to the Bochum University of Applied Sciences. And our next, next project where we try to implement a larger mine thermal energy storage will be at the Ruhr University. Um, there's also um, the energy production of a district heating grid here. There's um, 
CHP plants operated here. And below those CHP plants, we also have um, an abandoned colliery that is directly situated below that area. And what is important to know about this um, part of the colliery is that it's not connected to a mine drainage system and it's an isolated part, so it's suitable for a, for a storage operation. So that's very important to keep in mind. Um, with our partners from Delta H, we um, built a 3D numerical model, which included the geology and also the tectonics, um, and also the mine layout um, of our colliery um, that we used to simulate the injection and production of our heat into the mine. Um, here you can see this is our drilling rig, some pictures of our drilling operation. Um, we didn't use any rotary steerable system. We just tried to drill as vertical as possible. We were successful and uh, all three wells hit the, the mine on target. So this worked out pretty well for a near shallow um, colliery um, target. Also each meter we took um, a cutting sample. So you can see the wool carboniferous sandstone, siltstone, claystone samples, and also coal, which what is really nice to highlight is you can see some uh, fragments of our wooden beam that we drilled through. And here as a very nice downhole picture, you can see that we clearly drilled through the middle of a wooden beam while aiming at the um, drift number one at our third well. And here you have also some examples from the wooden beam construction that were circulated to the surface. Most uh, expensive fire starters at our IG. So we don't use that for fire starting, just a joke. Um, and at the end of the project, we were able to do a first proof of concept where we combined the, the heat from the solar power plant and injected that heat into our mine thermal energy storage. So we produced um, the mine water from the first well heated it up with the heat from the uh, solar power plant and then injected it into the second well. And this is also clearly indicated um, in this um, diagram here that you can see, okay, we have um, an increased delta T from the CSP plant that we used to increase the temperature of the mine water that was injected into the mine. And currently we're um, starting to go into a full operation this spring um, to have yeah, this as a long-term storage um, for this year or starting this year. So what were the lessons learned from our project? Um, in order to achieve high flow rates, you should drill your wells into non-backfilled, fully flooded parts of the mine. Um, we discovered that you had quite some heat losses from the surface to the downhole temperature, so that you should um, yeah, increase your starting temperature at the surface um, compared to the injection temperature in, into the mine. We also saw that um, you should eliminate any intake of oxygen into the mine water system because otherwise, depending on the chemistry of your mine water, you might see a lot of precipitation of iron min minerals. Um, for this, you should also think about installing injection valves that you yeah just try to eliminate any air intake into the system. And if you're not thinking about using rotary steerable system, um, you should try to design your drill string as rigid as possible. For example, with using, using heavy drill collars and slightly oversized stabilizers. Um, yeah, that really worked quite well for our um, project. And as an outlook, here you can see, um, this is the map of North Rhine-Westphalia. You can also see the district heating grid is symbolized in red. And this is the district heating grid of the Rhine-Ruhr area, which is one of the largest district heating grids uh, in Europe. And you can see all the coal conditions, uh, concessions are highlighted in, um, in, 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 in black. So there is a, a good, um, yeah, possibility to utilize mine water in conjunction with the district heating grid. And yeah, currently we have a lot of inquiries for mine water projects and um, there's a lot going on at our um, institute. And you can see that at just in the Ruhr area, we have almost 200 abandoned coal that are, yeah, 
that we can look into for re reutilization of mine water. And um, yeah, I think we should try to use this as a as a benefit, so that um, yeah we have that we tap into our let's say national energy resources at this current time. So with this slide, I would like to um, close my presentation and uh, would like to thank you for your attention. And I'm open for questions.